Nama Yudhafa, good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I am determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. We've been reading Ajahn Chah's book, Bodhiyana. We're in the Dhamma talk, The Two Faces of Reality. Today's section is constant practice. In our practice, we just look directly at the mind. Whenever our practice begins to slacken off, we see it and make it firm. Then shortly after, it goes again. That's the way it pulls you around. But the person with good mindfulness takes a firm hold and constantly reestablishes himself, pulling himself back, training, practicing, and developing himself in this way. The person with poor mindfulness just lets it all fall apart. He strays off and gets sidetracked again and again. He's not strong and firmly rooted in practice. Thus, he's continuously pulled away by his worldly desires. Something pulls him here, something pulls him there. He lives following his whims and desires, never putting an end to his world, this worldly cycle. Coming to ordain is not so easy. You must determine to make your mind firm. You should be confident in the practice, confident enough to continue practicing until you become fed up with both your like and dislikes, and see in accordance with truth. Usually you are dissatisfied with only your dislikes, if you like something, then you aren't ready to give it up. You have to come become fed up with both your dislike and your likes, your suffering and your happiness. You don't see that this is the very essence of Dhamma. The Dhamma of the Buddha is profound and refined. It isn't easy to comprehend. If true wisdom has not yet arisen, then you can't see it. You don't look forward, and you don't look back. When you experience happiness, you think that there will only be happiness. Whenever there is suffering, you think that there will only be suffering. You don't see that wherever there is big, there's small. Wherever there's small, there's big. You don't see it that way. You see only one side, and thus it's never ending. There are two sides to everything. You must see both sides. Then when happiness arises, you don't get lost. When suffering arises, you don't get lost. When happiness arises, you don't forget the suffering. Because you see that they are interdependent. In a similar way, food is beneficial to all beings for the maintenance of the body, but actually food can also be harmful, for example, when it causes various stomach upsets. When you see the advantages of something, you must perceive the disadvantages also, and vice versa. When you feel hatred and aversion, you should contemplate love and understanding. In this way, you become more balanced, and your mind becomes more settled. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.